of course, I think this is the new phobia. There, there are a lot of phobias, you know, in the, in this century. But I think is one of the biggest since the September the 11th. As Muslims, we are ashamed of, of that, and we never. The, the religion never said to kill an, an innocent people. You know, football players just want to play football and they, you know, anything else, like I say, the, the, the religious background or, or where they're from, shouldn't really come into it. Shouldn't come into it. You shouldn't be prejudiced against anyone. I personally know a bit the Muslim religion. And I never saw and I never read or heard in the Quran or a true Muslim talking about whatever you see on TV sometimes. You always have people using the religion. You have bad people everywhere. It doesn't mean that all of them are bad. Islamophobia is like someone who's scared of Islam. Phobia is like a fear of something, so I think maybe it's a fear of Islam or a religion. Islamophobia to me means um, people who have a fear and an ignorance of about Islam. And straight after the 7-7 um, bombing, people were like looking at us differently and some, some of our good mates, um, they weren't actually that close to us anymore. Calling all sorts of names, you Paki bastard, you black bastard, go back to Pakistan, you terrorist. At least more than 20 people were there. Tried to attack me when I pushed back, and the knife went through here in my head, uh, in my face, in my arm. And we were more terrified when they said to us, You terrorist, get out from here and get out from this country. You know, my dad is. He's a full, he's a pious person, he's, he's got beard and that, but he's so scared of going out just for about 10 minutes, just to go to the mosque, but he's still so scared. As soon as you put the Islamic dress on and you get onto any sort of public transport or public area, you're sort of constantly aware of this phobia. Well, me and my mum were just walking and um, these two boys stopped in a bicycle and they called my headscarf a tea cloth. And um, that was just really stupid and arrogant because they didn't know what it was. They just go, why are you wearing a tea cloth? This always happens to me in school because this guy just comes and just rips it off my head. Then I go and take it from him and he just goes, oh my God, just take that thing off. It does not look right and it doesn't look right and that. So I think, yeah, women get getting more. My parents, like, they don't really talk about that to me. It's just like, if somebody says like, oh, get out of this country, you don't belong here, and then, like, I just don't say anything. Life is so difficult now, and for me, I'm just a Muslim. I respect my religion, I respect the others as well. And uh, when somebody does not respect my religion, you know, does not respect his religion as well. The most important thing, even when you come from different countries, is to be to be able to to work together. I mean, the the most important thing is, is respect, respect, just respect. Yeah. You know, I wear a hat. I come from school, then people sing on the bus and that. I know they're whispering, but I just like leave it, then I go off. But that makes me feel really sad. People in our country wear gangster clothes, like those um, hats and that. We, 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 no one says to them, take that stupid hat off or anything like that. So I don't see why they can say it to someone who wears what they want to wear. And it's up to them what they wear. You know, most people don't understand that there is a difference between a Sikh turban and, you know, the turban that Osama bin Laden wears. We were getting stared at a lot more and I remember one time we were actually in the queue to check in for a flight and a little girl started crying after just looking at me, you know, and it was just like, 
why are you crying? Like, uh, uh, I'm not exactly going to do anything to you. Like, I'm just trying to get on the plane, just like you. You know, the sense of panic that, that had been created at that time in this, so everyone living in this kind of climate of fear, it was kind of ridiculous. We went down to London for a football tournament, and it's all of us in a minibus and a seven so we back to our hotel. Next minute we see five police cars, helicopters, different things. We're like, I wonder what's going on, something's really going down. So we went around the roundabout once and Jamel was like this, I think the police are following us. We're like, ah, no, no. We went around it a couple of times. Next minute, four police cars came, a couple of meat wagons, a helicopter above us, and they came up to our car, two of them with guns pointing at it, handcuffed him, started questioning us where he was from, said to us, do you have guns in the car? We just started laughing, we're like, excuse me, guns? We're here for a football tournament? And they're like, get out of the car questioned us, asked our names, everything, kept us there for half an hour. At the end of it, all we, all we got was, sorry guys, we got the wrong people. We were laughing at the time because it was like surreal and you don't believe it, but afterwards we thought, imagine they thought we had a weapon and they just shot us, you know, and you think about it and then it sort of sinks in later on. Not everyone is bad, like there are some certain amount of people that are like good, like respect our culture, but there are like some people that doesn't like any of us. Just wants us to get out of the country. I think I've suffered it a bit too much. You know, every time I go into public transport, I just don't feel comfortable. You know, people they just give you dirty looks every time you get onto the bus or train, and I just don't feel comfortable with my own area, my own social life, and it does really make me feel a bit depressed. You know, it makes me feel very isolated. You shouldn't judge people because of their religion. It's whether they're good or bad people. We've got two or three Muslim players with us now, and it's not something that's even mentioned within our dressing room or, or within our club, although we know that when we played Newcastle United, unfortunately, Mido suffered some, some abuse from the terraces that day, but it's not something that had even crossed our minds before that incident. There's no reason at all to, to hear these uh, abuses in, 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 uh, or in our life or in football. So I was very frustrated by, by it and I was very happy that I scored. Very frustrating to, to see it in the, English, in the English game because as players we are all well together. We are all together wherever you come from, whatever your colour is. Uh, whatever is your religion. We never had a problem of racist in the, inside the dressing room. And it should be the same for people as well, for the supporters, and to be the same, to see how the players, they are together. I think it's always something, some, someone has to be afraid of something and put a label on something. Um, in my day, I think it was the IRA. If you spoke with a nice accent, you were in the IRA. If you if you Islamic, then you you can you got a bomb bomb under your shirt. It's absolutely ridiculous. And again, it's ignorance, absolutely not no understanding of a culture, which then means it's a threat. I don't see enough coverage of Muslim people. I didn't see enough coverage in in, in the early days, in, in, as we speak about in Ireland, of people actually saying what the problem was. And when people got together and spoke about it, you saw what happened in Northern Ireland. You know, it's amazing. All it meant was just people came together and spoke, and messages got out, and people changed their opinions. It's an exceptional challenge by Turan. Takes the ball with his left foot. You see it there. That's cool. C'est pas un hasard que on vit ce racisme en ce moment. C'est simplement l'histoire aussi qui veut ça. C'est simplement le fait de vouloir démontrer que l'islam est une religion dangereuse, que l'islam est égal à terrorisme, parce que c'est l'effet du 11 septembre. Je crois que c'est ça aussi qui fait que dans nos sociétés, on véhicule ce message-là. On vend ce message-là, donc les gens finissent par croire que c'est vrai. When the bombing that happened in 9-11, it's just not like Christian people that died, there were also Muslim and other different religions as well. Quite heartbreaking that there was people, uh, for no reason at all, they just lost their lives for something which they didn't deserve. Previously, the policies were more like skin colour, racism, kick them out because of their skin colour. 
And now I think because of this 77911, they've directed it towards um, Islamophobia and Muslims. I remember we were all in school and it was just rumours at first, oh yeah, London's being bombed and I was like, that can't be right because it happens across the world but I'd never really thought it would happen like in England where we live. So it came as like a really big shock and I had like relatives that lived there and I was like, oh well, are they all okay? Because nobody knew what was happening and it was like, it was mayhem really. It's like they were blaming us and they were like blaming all the Asian people in Sunderland and it's like things changed, it's like people became like more racist I think there might be some people that are scared of Muslims, maybe because of the bombings. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Last year, when the incident happened at Glasgow with the bombing, a couple of days after, I was at Tea in the Park volunteering with Show Racism the Red Card. And it was so unbelievably hard. The whole weekend, well, we were getting abuse from people. And this is purely because we were promoting the message of saying no to racism. Um, the people were coming up to us and saying, so you agree with um, terrorism, you think that's OK? And we were standing there, of course we don't think that's OK, but we also don't think that racism is OK. Ever since the, you know, 9-11 and 7 I've just been isolated from most places and most people, so I just keep on thinking that, you know, more wrong things will happen to me, so I'll just leave that, just go with my own religion. It's a massive issue, but they should like lay off them because there's like plenty of other things that other races are doing, and it's just it's up bullying, but it is getting like out of hand. Where ignorance starts sometimes at home. If the children aren't brought up the right way, if the parents aren't doing the right thing, the children look up to their parents and see them as role models, and if they're not doing the right thing, they'll do the same. So, I said, it's, it's society, as I said before, is, a, is, is the problem. It's not, it's not all of them that done it, it's just some of them. If Muslims do anything, it's straight away on the news, but if someone else does anything, they don't, sp they, they don't say what, the, what religion they follow, it's always Islam and all that. Oh, and it's Boateng coming in! Uh, and it's the same as in Christianity. People <laughs> think Christians are, are uh, holy people, but not every Christian is a holy pe person. So we have, you know, good uh, religious people, but we have also bad religious people. The thing is that we don't have to think that all Muslims are the same, or all Christians are the same. Give the person a chance, get to know that person, and you decide whether that person is from a good heart. Because of the media, yeah, most people think bad about Muslims. All right, they are bad Muslims, yeah, but not all Muslims are bad. And it's Messi, and surely there it is. The first of how many La Liga goals for Thierry Henry? No, first of all, I think people have to, I always say before you judge, you need to know people. You need to know about their culture. You need to know about why, why they're doing certain thing. You know, I, I think people are confusing stuff with what they see on TV and what they should learn themselves. No, no disrespect to TV, no disrespect to uh, journalists or, or whatever, but they have a big power and sometimes, sometimes they use it the wrong way. If people are scared of me, I don't care because I'm just getting my, my own life. I'm not doing nothing wrong. All of our friends, we play pool and everything, go do football and everything. But people think like, oh, they just Muslim, they sit in the house and just play and everything. But we like, we are like them as well. We do, we do the things with, they do, but not all the things they do. Hills are offside, there's no flag against Canute, and he scored! As a Muslim, I started practicing when I was uh, around 20. It's something uh, that helps you in every aspect of your life and uh, football is one of these aspects so it helps me as well in football.
Ramadan teaches you to be patient and make an effort and be disciplined, you know, so it helps in life as well and in football, of course. Since I became a Muslim, I changed my life, you know, I tried to help the people, you know, you know, 2.5% uh, of my wages to, to give to the poor people, you know, and I think a lot of Muslims does it, you know, and I think it's fantastic, but we can't see that often, you know. A Muslim uh, person is not supposed to discriminate. Anybody could be a Muslim, you know. It's, it doesn't really matter what colour you are, it's about your faith and what you believe in. So even you could be a Muslim. I'm coming up 21. Um, when I was 19, I decided to convert to Islam. And a lot of people, when I first tell them that, they're so shocked and they say, you know, you are so far removed from what I picture a Muslim to look like. And I just, I just laugh it off because so now, especially now that I've converted, I can say, well, you know, there's no what a Muslim looks like. My sister's Muslim as well, so she's just turned Muslim recently. Got a lot of family that's Muslim. There's a great piece of close control here. She's just skipping out of the tackle. I have relatives who are Muslim, so I understand um, their perspectives and points of view. And it's a shame, obviously, with the political climate and what's going on. Hopefully, though, people, as soon as they learn about other people's cultures, and they'll gain a greater understanding and won't be so negative. Uh, they, they wear these things, cover them. I am a Muslim. I mean, as I said, no one gets forced into wearing a headscarf. That's something that's up to you. I don't wear a headscarf. People might think I'm from a different religion, but no, I'm from Islam. Having learned more and more about Islam, in fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he encouraged women to play an active role in society. His first wife, Khadija, she was actually a businesswoman. He worked for her. So, I mean, women have, throughout time, always played a very important role in Islam. It's all different religions in the change rooms, and it's interesting to get to know the, the different religions. And when you see the players coming, the Muslim boys come in, and they sort of like they're fasting, and. You see them doing their prayers and things like that because I'm obviously I'm Catholic and that, so it's all different. So you speak to the boys and you get to know people. My friends, they're not not m most of them are not Muslims, but they respect me as a Muslim, so they know that I do good stuff. My friends are quite strict Muslim, and um, yeah, he still has time to play with us though. Islam teaches um, peace, and Islam does mean peace. And um, the, peop the people, like the terrorists, I don't think the Muslims, um, they call themselves Muslims, but they're not. I don't think people are scared anymore. I think they're just getting the wrong stereotype of people. All the footballers and that, yes. showing the red card to the racism, I think that helps a lot. Show racism the red card trying to understand each other. That's it, you know, and not trying to think, you know, they shouldn't do this here and do that. I mean, we're here. Let's try to cohabitate. You can work together and, you know, help and educate the people who are a bit ignorant about it. If you see someone being racist, then you shouldn't just, like, sit back and, and, and ignore it or join in. You should, like, stand up for whoever's being discriminated against. Growing up, you don't really see colour or religion. And that needs to be brought from that. Your thinking as a child it needs to stem all the way through your life. Young people growing up can take that message on board because they all support, most of them support football teams. And they probably don't think about the fact that some of the players are different nationalities and different religions. They probably just see their team in one shirt. Um, but the fact is that all these different cultures come together. In my school, it's going around ever. We've got posters ever of show racing the red card, and we take bullying and racism seriously in our school. We both play for football teams, um, senior football teams, and our teams aren't made up of only Muslims. It's mixed. We've got um, blacks, whites, and Portuguese. It's all mixed up, and 
everyone gets so long. And football is a great way of sort of uniting everyone and putting your religious beliefs, your colours and everything behind you because once you get on that pitch, no one sort of asks you whether you're a Muslim, you're a Jew, you're a Hindu, whether you're black, white, whatever. It's just about you and your teammates and trying to win that game and at the end of the day, it works. Teamwork, yeah. As long as that we know that racism is wrong and like we're the next generation, so we're, we're the ones can, that can change it. Every colour, every need, so listen to my message, leave my warning, tell him